Well, hello and welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for coming. My name's Lyndon, and in this video, I want to take a look at a 12 bar blues. So, a 12 bar blues is a fundamental chord progression in the blues genre, which has had its influence everywhere jazz, rock and roll, swing, obviously blues, country and western, as well as pop songs, and it's just something that you'll see absolutely everywhere. So if you understand it and you recognize it, that's got to be a good thing. And just to give you three massive tunes, which are exactly a 12 bar blue format, that would be Johnny Be Good, uh, uh, Hound Dog and Sweet Home Chicago are tunes that follow a blues, a 12 bar blues formula. However, that particular formula is, and variations of it, honestly, is absolutely everywhere. So in this video, I want to take a look at the structure of a 12 bar blues, show you, uh, give you a, a kind of generic melody to play over one, which I strongly suggest you learn in this key and lots of other keys as well. Also, uh, we want to have a look at the types of chords in this particular chord chart and make sure that we understand them. Have a look at another more straightforward blue scale way of approaching an improvisation and make sure that you're comfortable with that. And then give you some backing tracks, um, give you at least four different ways that you can get backing tracks. Uh, to play along with this and practice your improvisation. So uh, I'm also going to put some worksheets up at the end, so I'm going to make notes of everything that I do, take a photograph of it and put it at the end of the video so that you can screenshot that and download it. And if you have any questions or you don't get anything, mention it in the comments. I'm really responsive. I try and come back immediately within the hour. If not, it was always, nearly always uh, in, in a day. So, um, so what could be better? What more could I do? Uh, so let's go into it and have a look. Now, before we do, before we take that dig, deep dive, important to me that I say my thank yous. Thank you so much for supporting this channel. You can support the channel by subscribing, by sharing, sending positive feedback, giving me suggestions on videos that you'd like to see. It really influences what I do and the videos that I make. Thank you for all of that. Thank you even more to the people that have bought me coffee and sent me tips on PayPal. I so much appreciate that. It really massively, massively helps. So thank you and please subscribe to the channel. So let's take a look. Uh, now I'm using a fabulous app, which I love with all my heart, which is iReal Pro. And iReal Pro is a fantastic app. If you haven't got it, you should get it. It's available for your iPhone, iPad, desktop computer, and Android. It's just so, so interesting incredibly useful and that's where I'm getting this backing track from and I've been able to print out this chord chart. So let's have a look. So 12 bar blues, well no prizes for, get, for guessing how many bars in a 12 bar blues. It's 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 and then the whole form just repeats and it goes on forever. And if we, so that's why it's a 12 bar blues and, uh, and the types of chord that we've got here are all the same types of chord. Now you could have loads of chord substitutions or variations, but I've deliberately picked something which is quite straightforward so that we can get our heads around it really, really easily. And uh, all of these chords, there's only three, you've got D7, G7, and A7. So anything, anytime you see a chord with a seven after it, it's exactly the same as a regular major scale, but the seventh note has been flattened. That's all it means. So you've got a root, third, fifth, and flattened seventh. So have a look here, we've got D7, and this type of chord has got a name. It's often called a dominant seventh chord, but it's also got another name, which is a crazy Greek name, Mixolydian. So all of these are Mixolydian, and that means it is the fifth mode of another scale, another major scale. So D7, uh, D major would normally be D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, and D, but in this case you're going to flatten the seventh note, which is the C sharp, and you get D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C, and D. And that scale could be viewed in a few different ways, but one way to look at it, it is the fifth, mo of, fifth mode of G major. Yeah, so it's exactly the same notes as G major, but starting on the fifth 
note. So that's D7 and G7 is the same. The seventh note of G7 is F sharp and that becomes an F. The only other chord that we've got is A7 and the seventh note of A major is uh, G sharp and that becomes a G. So there's a bunch of ways that we can practice this and what I've done for you here as you can see is I've written out some notes that are going to fit nicely over these chords and I'm going to play those notes and it's going to make like a generic jazz tune a generic blues sorry a generic blues tune so it'll sound like this <laughs> And that already sounds really, really, really nice. And if I add that to the backing track, that's going to sound lovely as well. So let's have a listen. So this is just with iReal Pro. Yeah, lovely, sounds really, really, really cool. So as I've said, I'm gonna put this worksheet at the end. I suggest you take a note of these notes and learn this. Uh, by the way, I should have said in the mo uh, at the moment, we are in the key of D for alto saxophones, which is the key of G for tenor saxophones, and in concert pitch, this is the key of F. If you're not sure why saxophones are in another key, I just made a video about that, so have a look. Maybe I'll put a link. Um, but yeah, so we're in the key of D. So this is a blues in D for alto saxophone. So there's a number of ways that I could go, I could think about improvising through this. And what I'm gonna do is I've given you a couple of plans. Plan A, or plan number one, you could use a blue scale over this. Now, which blue scale am I gonna use? Well, I'm gonna use a D blue scale. So if you ever come across a blues and the key is it's a blues in G, you're gonna use a G blue scale. If it's a blues in A, use an A blue scale. If it's a blues in D, use a D blues scale. And just to be absolutely 100% sure that you're comfortable with a blue scale and how to arrive, let me write out, and how to arrive at one, let me write out a recipe, which hopefully should be really straightforward. So a D blue scale is a type of D minor scale. And the way that I think about D minor is that I can think of it as the second mode of C major. So if I, I'm on D, I want a D minor. If I go a whole step down, one whole tone down from there, I get C major. Here's C major, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and C. And this is C major. Now, if I take these notes, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, and D, this gives me D minor seven, and that's a Dorian. If I take now the root and the third and the fifth and the seventh, that gives me the chord, which is still D minor seven, that's the chord. And if I add in, let's number these notes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If I add in the fourth note, I get D, F, G, A, C, and D. So this is one, three, five, four, five, and seven, and the root again. And this is my D minor pentatonic. It's still regarded as D minor seven, by the way, because it has all of the, the same chord tones, one, three, five, and seven. Now, if I add in uh, the flat five, 
which is this note here. So A flat or G sharp, which is the same note, I get D, F, G, G sharp, A, C, D, and this is ba -ba -ba -ba, my blue scale. And that is one, three, four, flat five, uh, five, uh, seven, and one. And it's still D minor seven. Still be regarded as a D minor seven. So this is my blue scale recipe. Um, and as I've said, I'm gonna put a picture of that at the end of this video so that you can screenshot it and print it out if that's not something that you're if it's something that you're not 100% sure about so it'd be really good for you to understand the recipe of a blue scale and this way hopefully you can work it out in any key so let's see what that sounds like if I use the blue scale to improvise over this fabulous chord chart and I've written the blue scale down here and this would be a nice straightforward way of playing uh, over a 12 bar blues. Listen to how nice it sounds. I'm just going to do a solo, really simple solo going up and down the blue scale. around sound nice it sounds like an absolutely perfectly good solo through a 12 bar blues and if you put that on a different backing track so I've got some hopefully other backing tracks here uh, so this one is on jazz uh, session band volume one and it is uh, it's a it's a preloaded look demo number nine but uh, sorry demo number eight basic major blues and that's on a medium swing I'm going to do a blue scale solo based solo through it and it's going to sound lovely. Have a listen, better quality backing track. Sounds lovely. Now, as those chords went by, you might notice that they put some chord substitutions in there as well, because as I said before, did, did I say this before? You can put some different chords in a 12 bar blues. You can substitute some chords. The one on iReal Pro is super basic and that's absolutely fine, still sounds awesome. I've also got here somewhere, hopefully if I get to it quickly, yeah, on quartet, this is quartet one. And if you do a search for blues, uh, and search there and scroll down they've got a blues in F how fantastic is that uh, I've gone into settings here and I want to put it into E flat and uh, I've got a trio piano bass and drums that's really 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 nice there's no intro on this so let's have a listen and see how that sounds this is really fast 240 beats but that's okay and I'm just going to use the same technique now I'm just going to use a blue scale all the way through it have a listen
So exactly the same. And then finally, if we go on to YouTube, exactly the same technique. If we go on to YouTube and we do a, a, a search for blues, uh, 12 bar blues, let's do that. So 12 bar blues in F, that's what I need. And I think this one was really nice. Now, I don't want to get done for copyright, so I know that I'm not 100% sure where I stand with copyright. Let's have a quick listen for a few seconds. So as I said, I don't want to leave that running too long because I don't want to get copyrighted, get a copyright strike. But so there's clearly loads and loads and loads of places that you can find backing tracks that will sound really, really, really nice um, for your 12 bar blues. So you can practice that. And again, if you're in a band or you want to be in a band, this would be a fantastic thing to be able to practice and, and be feel comfortable with because it's going to come up all the time. So plan number two, Two would be to follow the chords and change key as you go. So what you would do is you play the root, the third, the fifth, the seventh, and maybe the ninth of each chord as it went past. And that would be a really good starting point to build up your solo skills. So I will do that now and I'll put the notes that I'm playing at the bottom of the screen. So have a listen. be a fantastic exercise to do and if you threw that around a little bit I'm just going to throw those notes around a little bit it would sound like a, a solo that you could then develop and develop <laughs> So again, all I've done there is I've just followed the chords and I'm just playing around with the root, the third, the fifth, and the seventh. I think before I started playing, I said add in the ninth as well, which you could do, but I didn't in that example, just in case anybody wants to say, well, you said the ninth and then you didn't play the ninth. Uh, okay, so was that useful for you? Let me know if it is. Say hello in the comments below. I absolutely love hearing from other sax players across the world, especially when I think that I've positively contributed towards your experience with the saxophone. I really want to try and help as many people as I possibly can. So if I have helped you, do let me know. I'm so delighted. Thank you so much for watching my channel and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. All right, take care. Thanks ever so much. Bye-bye.